just got the vibe going. Alright, here we are at some random park in Orange, which is a city right next door to Anaheim where I live, to discuss the title of today's video, some bad news, unfortunately. It's no secret, or maybe if you're new to the channel, it is to you, but I've been running extremely hot the last two months. Been uh, making the best hand left and right, winning a bunch of big pots, and of course, the graph has looked like that. But if you guys are familiar with poker at all, you know that that can't last forever, and for me, it all came crashing down last Sunday at my 2550 private game. I didn't think to vlog it because the game isn't really that big compared to the stream games I play, so I figured why don't I play off camera, off the vlog this time, just try to relax, have some fun. I did relax, but didn't have a lot of fun. In fact, I ended up losing the most I've ever lost in a single day, just north of $100,000. That's right, six figures plus down the drain on Sunday. Needless to say, I ran extremely bad, got coolered all over the place, and never really won any significant pot. Hard to complain, of course, after being up like 300K in the first few weeks of this year. I feel like we should have probably expected this, but still doesn't make it any more enjoyable. However, today we are not gonna be discussing that session because I didn't get it on camera, and uh, no one wants to hear a bunch of bad beat stories. Instead, we're gonna focus on the silver lining, or the good news, which is that the show goes on. I play around once a week on Hustler Casino Live, and I can't really think of a better place to try and make some money back. The games are big, tons of action, and I'm in there to battle. So today we're gonna go over some hands I played yesterday on a 5-5-100 game on stream, or maybe the downswing will continue, only one way to find out. But before we do, I wanna let you guys know that next month I'll be going to The Lodge in Austin, Texas, here are the exact dates. I got invited out for the relaunch of their new live stream setup that they have going on. Should be fun. If you guys are in the area, feel free to say hello. And of course, expect some vlogs from there as well. But anyway, that's not until a later date. For now, let's focus on Hustler Casino Live. Let's go. All right, guys, here we go once again. Today we're playing some more 5-5 with 100 ante. For all intents and purposes, this game kind of plays like a 5100. I sit down with $100,000, and here we go. In the first interesting hand, I raise it up to 300 bucks with pocket nines on the button. Big blind calls, and then Eli, who limped in from early position for five bucks, limp re-raises to 1100. Perhaps a bit scary that he limped in and then raised after I put in 300, but I think I still have the best hand, so I make it $3,000 now, an additional $1,900 for him to call, and call he does. So we go heads up to a flop with $6,000 already in the middle, which is not bad. King, eight, deuce, only one overcard to my pocket nines, and a board that should be decent for me, so when he checks, I continue with a small bet of $2,100, and Eli makes the call. Would have been happy to take it down right then and there, but after he calls, maybe a bit concerning, so when the six of diamonds comes on the turn, he checks again, and this time I check it back, exercise some pot control. River is bad to worse. It's the ace of clubs, so if he was floating the flop with any sort of ace high, of course he now improves. But he checks again. I'm happy to get to showdown. I check it back, and what do you know? We were up against king nine suited. So we lose the first hand of the day. Perhaps a bit straightforward, but this hand is quite the opposite. Brazil God raises to $10, and then Matisau makes it $15. Not really sure what's going on with that, but I have 6-4 suited in middle position to decide. Let's play a normal hand. I make it 300 to go. Jibrail in late position disagrees and continues the shenanigans by making it $600. That's right, a minimum raise. Everyone folds, but when it gets back to me, I am going nowhere for that price. So I call, and we go heads up to a flop of queen, seven, five, two diamonds. So I've got an open-ended straight draw. Nothing else aside from that though, not even a spade out there, so I check, and now he bets $600 again. This board, however, even though I don't have a whole lot going on, is generally pretty good for me, I think, and not very good for him. I could have hands like pocket sevens, pocket fives, seven fives suited, flush draws, straight draws, and you know, just a ton of stuff that interacts well. So I decide to check raise, just like if I did have a strong hand, I make it 2600 
And this is where the hand gets quite interesting as my opponent decides to not call, but not fold either, instead put in another raise of his own. Seeing his cards, I suppose that makes some sense. He's got bottom two pair and what he probably thinks is the best hand, and he's not wrong. However, I do think I have possibilities of winning this hand later on. I could represent a flush if it were to come, or a straight would also benefit me since, you know, I actually do have a straight draw. After he re-raises on this flop, it seems really unlikely to me that he's got a diamond draw. So if a diamond comes, I'm planning on trying to steal the pot one way or another. So I toss in the additional $4,000 and we see a complete brick on the turn, the jack of hearts, no help to me. At this point, I'm probably just gonna give it up if he bets big at least, but he checks it back, which I did not expect, but I'm more than okay with, and especially so when the three of clubs comes on the river, giving me the best possible hand, AKA the nuts, in a dream situation. After he played his hand the way he did on the flop, it seems to me like he's got something really strong at minimum an overpair so i decide let's target the maximum amount of value possible pot is around fifteen thousand, and i put in twenty five thousand dollars as you guys can see my opponent is not happy about it but after a bunch of draws end up bricking really the only one that gets there is six four suited i can't blame him for being suspicious of my bet and sure enough that suspicion ends up working out as he tosses in a call good news for me of course and we end up winning a $65,000 pot after getting quite lucky on that river card. In the next one, Will opens to 300, and I'm next to act with Ace King. Good enough to raise, I think, so I make it a thousand bucks, and Will makes the call. Heads up to a flop of Ace, Eight, Seven, Rainbow. I've got top pair, top kicker, so when he checks, I bet $600, and he makes the call. Third card is not my favorite, it's the Jack of Diamonds, so now we're losing to hands like 10-9 suited, which is an open-ended straight draw on the flop, and of course, Ace-Jack. That's assuming I had the best hand all along, right? So this time I decide to check it back, and we see another bad river card, the Four of Clubs, so now the other open-ended straight draw on the flop improves, and that would be 6-5, which he could certainly have. So for all those reasons, when he bets $1,000, I decide to just call. Not sure if there's any point in raising, and sure enough, we're up against pocket nines, most likely not getting called if I do raise. All right, now it's time for another fun one. There's a bunch of limps for $5. Will makes it 300, and I'm on the button next to act with King Deuce of Diamonds. Not the best hand ever, but I do think Will is capable of raising a wide amount of holdings in this position, and I've been playing pretty tight, so why not get frisky this time around? I make it 1,200 to go. Eli cold calls the 1,200, and then Will calls as well. So we go three ways to this flop, which instantly rewards my questionable play preflop. King, King, seven with two spades. That's right, I've got three of a kind. For that reason, I'm happy to continue betting. 900 when it checks to me. And now, Eli check raises to 2,500. Not really sure what's up with that, but when Will folds, I am going nowhere. I make the call and we see the Jack of Diamonds on the turn. I'm expecting Eli to continue betting and sure enough he does, $4,600. What do I think he's got? Well, I think he could easily be doing this with a flush draw, maybe pocket sevens, of course a better king than mine as really any king is better than mine and that's the whole problem of playing king deuce and maybe even pocket jacks once in a very unlucky blue moon. However, I've seen enough of Eli's tricks to know that he could also be doing this with some random stuff Maybe a hand like ace seven suited or nine eight suited. Not very often, but you know, sometimes at least. So once again, I'm happy to make the call and we don't get the best river. It's the eight of spades. Now any flush draw that he was bluffing with improves of course. So I don't love this card. It seems that Eli does though, as he continues for one more bet, this time $11,000, right around two thirds the size of the pot. <sighs> I know my hand is very strong, but after I call his check raise on the flop and call his turn bet, I think it's obvious that I've got something pretty good, which in turn, I think makes it less likely Eli is bluffing. He's capable and he's smart enough to know that I am most likely not gonna fold at this point, so this bet seems very suspicious to me. Is it time for once and for all that I make a hero fold correctly? Well, as you guys can see, it would be incorrectly as Eli is trying to completely own me with ace 10 of clubs. But of course, in the moment, I had no idea that he was check raising the flop with that hand for no good reason other than to outplay me later in the hand. <sighs> Close decision, 
Not really sure what to do. I actually contemplate turning my hand into a bluff, maybe representing King Jack or King 8, but then I realized that that makes no sense. He's only got $18,000 behind. Can't expect him to fold a flush or even a king for that matter, at least not for such a small all-in in relation to the pot. So yeah, it's a tough decision. After a few minutes, I decide to give Eli some credit for a hand like pocket sevens or a rivered flush and let it go. And I did not know until later on that I got completely wrecked. In fact, I was quite proud of this fold in the moment. I thought for sure I had made the correct disciplined play. Just another example of me getting wrecked at Hustler Casino Live. As if that hand wasn't interesting enough, this one here is right up there with it. There's a raise to $1,000 from Brazil God in early position. That's right, $1,000 in a 5-5 game. I'm in middle position looking down at pocket queens. A very strong holding, you might say. So, of course, I raise it up, make it 3,000 to go. Action folds back around to Brazil God who makes the call. So, we're going to go heads up to a flop, which is a good one. Queen, seven, six, all diamonds. So, we've got top set on a monotone flop. Unless he's got ace X of diamonds, we should be in good shape. So I continue betting 1600 bucks. Brazil God makes the call. Turn card is not ideal. It's the eight of diamonds. And even worse news is that Brazil God now leads out. But it's a pretty small size, only $2,000. I'm happy to call in position and hope the board pairs for that price. So that's what I do. And what do you know? The seven of clubs comes on the river, giving me essentially the nuts unless we're up against quads or a straight flush but most likely that's not going to be the case instead we've got full house against what i perceive to be either the nut flush or the second nut flush and it seems that my guess is confirmed as brazil god bets out ten thousand dollars on this river a pretty big bet i might say now it's on me and of course it's not rocket science i have a full house i'm gonna raise for value in terms of what bluffs i would have I think the answer is not a whole lot. So for that reason, I decide not to go too big. I would hate for him to fold, for example, the king of diamonds or pocket jacks with a diamond. So I make it 27,000. And after a few seconds, he makes the call. Seems like good news. And sure enough, pocket queens are good against the ace king with the king of diamonds. And we win the biggest pot of the night so far. Just over $67,000. Nice. Next, it's time for me to once again clash with Brazil God. I open from early position with pocket aces this time. Eli calls in middle position, and now Brazil God makes it 1,200 on the button. <sighs> Nothing quite like the feeling of having pocket aces and getting re-raised pre-flop, right? Gets back to me, and of course, I'm going to put more chips into the pot since my cards are pretty good. $5,000 to go, and Brazil God makes the call with King Jack on the button. A bit questionable perhaps, but of course I'm not complaining, and especially so when he flops top pair on king 10 8 all hearts. Ideal flop for me, we've got the over pair and the nut flush draw, so I continue with a bet of $3,000, and he makes the call. Turn card is the five of diamonds, and after battling with him for most of the day, I feel like at some point he was going to take a stand, and if he was floating this flop with a not very good hand, I'm going to try to give him some rope to do just that. So I check, but he checks it back. River is the four of diamonds, and I think this is where I make a mistake and check again. After he checks back on the turn, it seems likely he's got some sort of showdown value, like top pair, for example, or perhaps a 10. If he was planning on bluffing, he most likely would have started then, so not really sure if there's any point in me checking again. Probably should have just bet for value and hope to get called by a worse hand, but instead I check, he checks it back, and we don't make a ton of money against top pair. Perhaps a bit disappointing, but that's life. The show goes on. In the next one, I straddle for $200 in first position. There's four callers, that's right, four people put in 200 before I check my option with 6-3 offsuit. Five ways to a flop, which is a good one for me. Once again, 9-6-3 with two hearts. So we've got bottom two, but it is a very dicey board. All sorts of available draws and potential better hands out there. So when action checks to Eli and he bets 600, I'm gonna check raise right away for some protection. I make it 3,600 to go. Eli's got top pair and a flush draw. He is going nowhere. Turn card, not good. Five of hearts. So now the most obvious draws get there, including the flush draw and eight, seven suited, for example, which is an open ender on the flop. Because of that, I check. Now Eli bets $3,800. Tough spot for me. I think for the most part, he's going to have me beat once this turn card comes. So even though I did flop two pair, I decided to just let it go. And sure enough, it was the correct decision this time. Not last time. You know, he got me with the ace, ten of clubs. But this time, I'm happy to see we did not get owned by Eli once again. Next, this one comes up where Will raises to $600. And I'm next to act on the button with ace, seven of hearts. Could go either way with this hand. I decide to just call this time. And we go three ways after Eli calls as well. 
Good board for me yet again. I'm really connecting with some flops today. Jack, 10, 9 with two hearts, giving me the nut flush draw. I guess a straight draw if an eight were to come. And of course, an over card. Can't dismiss those. Action checks to Will. He bets $1,200. And with all I have going on, I think raising right away is totally fine. But I decide to proceed with the passive route and just call. Turn card is the four of diamonds. Will this time bets 2700 And I think raising at this point would still not make a lot of sense since most of my strong hands would have just raised on the flop right away. So again, I put in the call, getting a good price to try to improve. That does not happen, though. It's the five of clubs, a complete brick. Interestingly enough, though, Will now checks. Of course, I've got ace high and very likely the losing hand. So bluffing seems like a reasonable option. But after Will plays his hand the way he has, I think it's very, very likely he's bet for value twice and is checking on the river in hopes of inducing either a bluff or perhaps a value bet from a worse hand. So I decide to wave the white flag instead and check it. And thank God that I did because Will was trapping with two pair. I did not see that one coming. I thought maybe he just had a jack and a bluff might have worked, but luckily didn't go for it this time. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we move to the last interesting hand of the night. Will opens to 500 bucks, and I've got Jack-8 suited on his left. I think this hand could go either way between just folding or sometimes re-raising. It's not exactly strong enough to call, especially if we're going to go multi-way with some players behind. So I decide to take the aggressive route this time, make it 2,000 to go, and Will calls. Heads up to a flop of Queen-5-4 with one club. I've got nothing, but when he checks, I'm going to pretend I have something. I did re-raise pre-flop after all, so I put in a bet of $1,400, and Will makes the call. Turn card is the three of spades. Not exactly ideal, since it's a bit better for him, I think. But what am I going to do, right? I've got jack high, and who knows? He could have floated the flop with a weak pair, ace high, you know, all sorts of stuff that will potentially fold to some more aggression. So when he checks this time, I bet $2,500. Don't want to go too big since, like I said, it's not the best turn card for me. And this time we get the job done versus ace high. Not exactly the best accomplishment, getting a fold versus that hand, but when you have jack high, it feels pretty good. Anyway, that was the last fun one of the night. As always, I hope you all enjoyed the hands. We must pay homage to him. Okay, so as you guys saw, things went quite well for me on stream. I ended up winning in total just shy of $70,000. I did play a few hours after the stream and it went well for me during those, uh, those few hands also. So yeah, I couldn't have uh, hoped for a better result following that six figure loss the previous Sunday. We are suddenly 70% of the way back out of that hole. I also played a small private game at Lucky Lady last week and I ended up winning like six or 7,000 in that game, which is nothing to, uh, to dismiss too easily. $7,000, quite a significant chunk of change. Of course, you shouldn't really be thinking about upswings or downswings, you know, more about just each session as an individual trying to play your best and such, but I'm only human and it's in the back of my mind whether I want it to be or not. But yeah, the heater, is kind of dead because I took a huge L, but at the same time, it feels like it's still breathing a bit after the uh, the session at Hustler Casino Live that you guys just saw. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. Don't forget about the uh, lodge visit coming up. Again, here are the dates, times, sessions, whatever information Joey the editor is going to put on this banner. Looking forward to uh, those sessions. It's going to be fun to to play back in Austin. It's been a while since I've been there. Always a fun time. But yeah. That's it for today, guys. As always, thank you for the support. Thanks for watching. And until next time, good luck at the tables. Peace.